Where is this function not continuous? All the integers. All right. So f not continuous. So we could write it like this. x is not continuous for x in the integers. And in set notation, the integers, we write it negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, dot, dot, dot. So not continuous at the integers. That's how we can write that faster. Yes, sir. Um, so the symbol for like in, so x in the um, interval is yeah. Um, on the thing, it looks like the uh, epsilon. Yep. Are those the same letters? Yes. Okay. They are. Uh, and there's two ways you will see epsilon written in your, if you read your textbook, mm -hmm. it's written like this. And that's the way I write it in a limit. Mm -hmm. And when I write it to mean is an element of, I write it in this other form, okay. which is a little more. There's one that looks like a backwards three, and the other one, I write it like this. It doesn't have that little indent in it. So it's just context. They are, yeah, they are the same letter, okay. just written differently. One of them may be a capital, and the other might be a lowercase. I'm not sure. You can look that up. I don't know if it's just uh, writing them differently. But you'll see plenty of people who uh, write it like that, right there. All right, so it's not continuous at all the integers. So it is continuous, basically in between. But we can be a little more specific than that. Let's go 0 to 1. Let's look at just this right here to begin with. We'll just look at one of these. And then if we can figure out one of them, we'll just basically move it over and move it over for all the others. So I think we can say pretty clearly continuous for x in the interval 0, 1, not including endpoints. So if I pick any x between 0 and 1, so let's take that x right there, I can build a little open neighborhood around it and have continuity inside. Unfortunately, they don't let me zoom in, or they don't, I can hold down to zoom in further, but this is as far as we can go zooming in. So as long as we're between 0 and 1, we can go a little to the left, a little to the right, and we're right inside, and we got a nice continuous limits approaching the value. So the question is, can I include either or neither of the endpoints? So is one and or both endpoints possible to include in the interval? So let's look on the left side first. And I'm going to delete that little green point, let's redraw that green point right here, is x equals 0 if I include 0 in here that would close it off is that okay to do? so what do I need? do I need full continuity at 0? or do I only need one side continuity? so I only need one side continuity if I'm going to talk about continuous on uh, if I close that. So are we right, if I look to the right, is our function continuous at zero? So I'm allowed to go to the right and be continuous. So our function is right continuous at zero. So if I took a right limit, uh, I would be or, well, technically, I would need to take a left limit as x approaches 0 from the, no, a right limit. x approaches 0 from the right side. Yeah. So we are right continuous at x equals 0. That allows me to include 0 inside our interval. So it's OK to have 0 in there. So we'll just clean that up. So we basically closed off the interval on the left side. What about continuous at 1? 
what's the problem with same interval again right here but let's look at the right side so here at the right side I will definitely not be continuous there because I don't even get a value my value is going to be up with the uh, at a y value of 1 not down there at 0 so I'm not going to get right continuous uh, in this interval oh left continuous sorry so we're not allowed to include 1 So we cannot include x equals 1 in the interval. So any questions about closing at 0 and not closing it off at 1? It should basically match the picture. You can see the half open, half closed intervals right here. And then all we need to do is just move it over 1, and then move it over 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So we're just going to take uh, that same interval and just slide it over one each direction. So I can write and all other similar intervals. Now I have to be a little more precise in math. I can't just say all over all other similar intervals and leave it at that. So what do the other similar intervals look like? They're all going to basically look like this. Close the left side, open on the right side. And then let's use a letter, we use k in pre-calculus. So let's go with k comma k plus 1. And as long as k is an integer, we already showed this was good, or this was true when k was 0. We got 0 to 1. And then when k is 1, we'll go 1 to 2. k is 2, 2 to 3. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And of course, we want to union a lot of these together. So the way we do this, it's going to look a lot like that summation notation. We write a big U, and we just write K is in the integers. And this says union up all the intervals that look like this for every integer K. And we can write this out. It'll be infinite in positive and negative directions. So it's going to look like negative 1 to 0, union 0 to 1, union 1 to 2, union dot, dot, dot. So we can write it out like that. You're just unioning up all the different intervals that look like this. And it looks like we are continuous over the real numbers, but you have to be careful because we're only partially continuous at the integer values. We're continuous on one of the two sides. So I can't really union them up to get the real numbers because we're not fully continuous uh, at all the integers. We're only one side of continuous. So we have a continuity theorem. So these are properties of continuous functions. So if we have the assumption that uh, f and g are continuous at x equals a, We're going to get a lot of conclusions if we add f and g together. That is continuous. f minus g is continuous. Now we write plus. Maybe I should be a little more specific. When I write plus, if you add two functions together, this is f of x plus g of x. And subtraction, f minus g is fx minus gx. 
and multiplication. It's a little tricky if you write FG together because sometimes you might mean composition. So we just write a small dot right there in between. That'll be multiplication. So we mean f of x times g of x. And the quotient. And just like any time we're dividing, you have to make sure that the g of x is not uh, equal to 0 at x equals a. Yeah, multiplication. So you won't see dot product until calc 3 okay. and calc 4. Okay. Dot product. But you probably will see it again in uh, statics if you're taking that or other physics classes. All right, division powers. Nth power when f of a to the n power is a real number. So just like before, if you would take a square root of a negative value, that's not going to be real. So it wouldn't make sense for that to be continuous. Now, if you notice the conditions I'm putting on here, I just said g of a didn't have to equal 0. Well, what happens if you have a limit what happens if g had a limit of 0? We assume g is continuous, so that meant the limit would also be the value. So on the assumption that they're continuous, your limit is your value. So I don't have to write down the value is not 0 and the limit's not 0, because they're equal. So if I just say a limit is not 0, so if your, limit's not, your value is not 0, that would mean your limit also has to not be 0, because it had to agree. So I don't need to put conditions for both the value and the limit. Because they're equal, I just write down one of the two. So basically, your basic, your arithmetic operations preserve continuity as long as you're not doing anything like divided by 0, square root of negatives, all those things. So let's prove the difference rule. I'm trying to find a good zoom that I can write clearly and you can read enough. So we'll prove So we're going to prove the difference is continuous. So we're going to start by supposing. So we're starting with the hypothesis f and g are continuous at x equals a. So that's the only assumption we're going to make. So what does it mean to be continuous? So we're going to look at what does it mean for f to be continuous at x equals a. What does continuous mean? Sort of. It's got limits. Your limit equals your value. So that's what it means to be continuous. And of course, G is very similar. So that's all continuous means. Your limit is your value. And of course, it's a number, not infinity or negative infinity or undefined. So I want to show now f minus g is continuous at x equals a. So what does it mean to be continuous? That means the limit matches the value. So I'm going to 
take a limit of the difference and see what we get. I'm going to use the limit law of differences. So we saw that we can split up the limit over subtraction as long as both limits separately exist. So this is lim x approaches a f of x minus lim x approaches a g of x. So I just split the limit across the subtraction. And now separately, we knew this was f of a. We made that assumption when we assumed they were continuous. So the first limit is f of a. The second limit is g of a. That's what it meant to be continuous. Those two limits are right there. And that's basically all we needed to show. There's nothing more to do. The limit is the value right there. So we got limit and value are equal. The other ones work almost exactly the same. You're just going to use the corresponding limit laws for powers, addition, multiplication, etc. So they're not really worth doing. Nothing different happens. So next theorem, all polynomials are continuous for all real x values. So we'll prove this one. Let p of x be a polynomial. And we are supposed to show p is continuous at any x value. So we'll take any real number. So when you let a be any real number, we're not assuming it's an integer, assuming it's uh, even or doing anything like that. So we're just going to assume it's a real number. And that's the only property we're going to use. Now, how do I test if we're continuous? I basically need to show the limit is value. So I'll show the limit equals the value. Why is this already true? What did we see with polynomials in the last section? Two sections ago, three sections ago. Oh, it was a long time ago. Somewhere, here we go. Limit is value when you have a polynomial. So that was pretty easy to do then. There wasn't much going on. So just using what's in the box right there. If you got a polynomial, your limit is your value. So there's really no work to do. We know limit is value. So this is by theorem in 2.2. And we're done. So we know we're allowed to already plug in the value.
So next theorem, all rational functions are continuous. Now, do you think all rational functions are continuous for all x values and the real numbers? So if I just leave this for all x, let's take a really easy example. Here's the easiest rational function I can think of that's worth writing down. Is that continuous everywhere for all x's? What x is it not continuous for? Zero. So any rational function that has vertical asymptote, you're definitely not continuous at the vertical asymptote. You can also have a hole in the function, in which case uh, you're not going to be continuous at that hole. So I think one of the first, let's see, I think we looked at a rational function first. Somewhere. Technically, this first function we looked at was a rational function. x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, and there was a hole in it. And at the hole, we didn't have vertical asymptote, but we can see from what we know about continuity, we're definitely not continuous at that hole right there. We have no value, so we can't be continuous. So not just vertical asymptotes, but any time you divide by 0, you have no uh, continuity. So an easy way to write that for all x in the function's domain. So if you're in the domain, that would mean your function is defined at that value. So it's enough to just say if you're in the domain, then you're going to be continuous if you have a rational function. So I'm not going to prove this. This just follows right from the uh, continuity, the uh, limit that you can plug in the value as long as you're not divided by 0. So if we look at an example, this one's already nicely factored. Definitely not continuous at negative 3, but also not continuous at positive 2. So not continuous at x equals 2 and x equals negative 3. Even though I could cancel, it still leaves a hole in the graph when I graph it. So can a function with a limit be continuous? Can a function with a limit? Like if you define a function to the limit of something else? Uh, yeah, it would depend on what the specifics of the function. So I could write continuous on negative infinity, comma, negative 3, union, negative 3, 2, union, 2, infinity. So all we did is took out the x values that made you divide by 0. So that is rational functions and polynomials. And our last theorem, nope, that's not the last theorem. We got one more, two more pages. All right. Next theorem, composition. Of continuous functions is continuous. Our continuous composition composition is all right. Composition is continuous because that's a prepositional phrase, not the subject. Is that right? Somebody passed English this millennium. All right. And we are not going to prove this one. We'll just believe it. So I'm not going to show the proof for this. But the most important application of this, probably the most useful 
version of this. Oh, that's a badass. Useful version. Use. All right, so obviously continuous, that's what I just wrote down. That's nothing monumental, but think about f of a. I'm going to rewrite it. like this. And we're going to cut out the middle term, the f of a. So just writing it as lim x approaches a f of x equals f of lim x approaches a of x. This might seem a little silly, but the idea of this is you can push the limit through a continuous function. That's what you want to think about here. So the limit is a through any function that is continuous at x equals a. So you can push the limit through a function if it's continuous at x equals a. And this is worth putting inside of a box. Very useful. We'll use it again and again in this quarter, and we'll use it again in Calc 2 as well. So I think this is a good place to stop. We're almost out of 2.5, and then we just have one more section, which is 2.6, and then we'll be into derivatives.